What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Only once every three years do we read these words from the prophet Micah here in church. Yet in the last 50 years or so, this last half of verse 8 has evolved into what emergent theologians are concluding will be the new source of authority for the Christian faith, answering the question, how then shall we live? And these times when church as we know it is rapidly becoming irrelevant in the wider culture, when people young and old seek ways to follow Jesus while eschewing the demands of allegiance to a particular set of doctrines, and we ourselves struggle to balance the competing demands of maintenance and mission in our own community, not just in dollars, but in time, attention, and most importantly, in our heads and in our hearts? The answer to that question, how then shall we live, assumes an even greater sense of urgency. This is certainly the case for the community Micah is addressing as he calls them to task in the masterful legal oratory we just heard with God the chief plaintiff. Summoning the mountains and hills as chief witnesses of the misdeeds and actions of the people for as long as time itself, God delivers a self-defense speech that rivals the finest dressing down of any mother who simply have had enough of her children's shenanigans. Excuse me. Can you tell me exactly what it is I have done wrong? Haven't I been more than fair to you? I have come to your rescue time and again, saved you from slavery and the Egyptians, sent you Moses and Aaron and Miriam, as well as saved you from all the other trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Why do you continue to dishonor me? Why can't you just do what you've promised? And the Israelites may be just a little bit dramatic, but most certainly wanting simply to get on with things, try to placate God, offering him increasingly costly options. Well, what is it, O oh God, that you want from us? What do you require? Burnt offerings. Calves, no, thousands of rams. How about 10,000 rivers of oil? How about our firstborn child? Just tell us what you want, and we will surely sacrifice this, even if it is an extreme request. To which God replies, You just don't get it, do you? What I want for you is to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Three very specific things. To do justice is mishfat, ensuring equal access to goods and services for all of society. To love kindness is to set, showing the same love to others that God has shown to you. And to walk humbly is halakha, to be steadfast and careful in one's ethics and morals. In other words, God does not desire a specific type of offering. God desires a specific type of person. The chief complaint against this community of faithful is that they have become very skilled at talking the talk, but they are not walking the talk. The talk being the attention they are placing on the ritual practices of their faith at the expense of or in place of the ethical obedience on which that faith is to be founded. Or as a good friend used to quip, sitting in church does not make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage makes you a car. 
The community of faith that God is calling to the carpet through Micah mm, is an urban elite community in Jerusalem. The powerful and the entitled of their time. And I am not making any comparisons here at all. <clears throat> I'll let you draw your own conclusions. And the message is simple, really. God is telling them this. This beautiful place that you've built to worship me. And the excellent liturgy and the music the terrific programs, and the generosity of your mission and outreach efforts are to be commended. But unless you take doing justice seriously, they are not worth much to me. God reminds them that their generosity can be problematic and spiritually destructive if it is grounded in widening the gap between rich and poor, violent economic and social structures, and a sense of entitlement. You see, by the time we get to chapter 6 that we heard today a little bit of, God has laid out ample evidence of their shortcomings. They have lied and cheated their way to wealth, victimized and impoverished women and children, and bullied other people as a means to their own ends. It's a great short book, really, Micah, about 10 pages or so, that begins with God thundering down from heaven on a real tear. And it's filled with lots of drama. You should read it to see how it all turns out. How, then, shall we live is a question not only for Micah's time, but certainly for our own time and in our own community. After this service, we will gather for our annual meeting, and we will dutifully listen to an accounting of our finances and the state of our parish. We will elect new vestry members and probably do some other stuff that I don't know about, and that's okay. As you listen to all that is presented, I encourage you to listen beneath all of it specifically for examples of how we are doing justice and loving kindness and walking humbly with our God. Because if we heed the words of God given through the prophet Micah, these are the things that really matter the most. Amen.